in this tutorial we're just going to go over electrochemistry so what is electrochemistry so under electrochemistry we basically get to study conversions between electrical energy to chemical energy and vice versa okay so this is what we are interested in and you're going to realize that under electrochemistry basically it is very useful in our day-to-day -day lives this is something that we are working with even for you to be able to watch this video, electrochemistry is somehow involved. Okay, now let's first of all review a flashlight. So how basically do we get to produce light? How does it produce light? So of course it's right there being produced. But then remember that you're using a cell or a battery. Okay, maybe a battery or a cell in there. So now what you need to understand is the battery of a cell stores energy in terms of chemical energy and then for light to be produced there's supposed to be conversions from the chemical to electrical so electrical is one that is going to cause the, the flashlight to be on so there's that conversion from chemical to electrical energy not only that you can think about a smartphone as well for you to be able to perform a lot of functions on your cell phone there's a conversion from chemical electrical energy because electrical energy is one that makes it possible for the phone to work for the phone to turn on but the battery that is charged stores energy in terms of chemical that is the way it is stored think about the calculator as well calculator as well this need of conversion from chemical energy to electrical energy for it to be on and also a vehicle there is also a need of conversions from a chemical energy in a battery for it to basically go to electrical and then turn on the vehicle so electrochemistry is a very practical topic that we're going to work with and then so in summary we are saying electrochemistry studies the conversions interconversions of energy between electrical and chemical energy okay so we've talked about the real life applications and we've therefore seen that it is very very important for us to understand what basically gets to happen okay so we have what we call electrochemical reactions under electrochemistry so we can define an electrochemical reaction to be any or any reaction that involves the transfer of electrons okay so it will involve transfer of electrons from one reactant to the other so take an assumption to say in a case where you have A reacting with B and then to give you C and D okay so where you have electrons being transferred from A to B, that is what we're calling an electrochemical reaction. So you notice that you talked about an electrochemical reaction to be a redox reaction. So which involves oxidation and what? Reduction. Okay, so what is reduction? We can define reduction to be the gain of electrons. Okay, so reduction is gain of electrons. And then we can also talk about oxidation to be what loss of electrons so when you have two reactants a and b and then a is losing electrons to b we can say a is undergoing oxidation and the b that is gaining the electrons is undergoing what reduction reduction so these are called half reactions so under stoichiometry we had reviewed how we get to balance these redox reactions so under the study of electrochemistry like we've said, it involves the interconversions between chemical and electrical. We're going to have a cell that converts our energy from chemical to electrical, which is a common one. Okay, so this is a galvanic cell. We call that a galvanic cell. And then we also have another cell that will involve conversions from electrical to chemical energy as well. Okay, so these are the two cells that we're going to be talking about. All right. So now one thing that we need to understand is that let me give you an example first of all okay so now let's first of all review this concept where we have our reactant there we have two reactants and then this is what they're giving us here so under the study of electrochemistry it's very very important that you're able to balance this chemical equation okay so first of all we need to understand let's try to identify the cell the half cell or the half reaction that is basically reduction 
and oxidation. So if you try to observe this one, you notice that there is a reduction in terms of, um, there is an increase, sorry, so we call that oxidation. So an, inc an increase in the oxidation number is referred to as oxidation. And then you, when you try to look at the other one, we are moving from 4 to 3. Okay. So that is called reduction, right? We have moved from 4 to, to a 3 there. And what does this mean? So this tells us to say that when you are moving from 4 to 3, it implies that we had gained a single electron. So which gives us positive 4 minus 1, giving us a 3 on the other side. And then when you look at the oxidation reaction as well, you notice that there is an increase from 2 to 4, which implies that there was loss in two electrons. So, but we're saying an electrochemical reaction will involve a complete transfer of electrons from one reactant to another. So all we are saying here, what is happening is, electrons are being lost by one reaction, by one reactant to the other one. Okay? So this one is losing because it's being oxidized. So now, if you are losing two electrons and then we are getting one electron, it doesn't make sense, not so. So we want to make sure that the number of electrons being lost are equivalent to the number of electrons being what? Being gained. And that is what we call an electrochemical reaction. So basically what gets to happen is we need to know how we get to, to balance that. Let me just show it again. So how are we going to balance it? So in this case, it's very, very simple. We first of all want to rewrite this as half reactions. And it's very, very easy in this case because all we have are the same reactants themselves. So I'll start with the first one. I'll write it the way it is on the reactants part, and then I'll write what is on the products part. Okay. That's what we have. So now we are saying it being a reduction. We are moving from a 4 to 3. It tells us to say that it was what? It was gain, right? So what are we going to do? Who had an electron there? Which will basically make sense because you do know that 4 plus a negative 1 is going to give you a positive 3. So this is a reduction reaction. And then on the other part, we're going to write the other half reaction. Moving us from that part, getting us to what? Getting us to a 4, which is an oxidation because of an increase in oxidation number. This tells us to say we had lost 2 electrons because if you had a positive 4, and a minus 2, it will get back to what you had. So this is what we have. Now we need to make sure that the number of electrons being lost is equivalent to the number of electrons being gained. So what are we supposed to do? The number of electrons, according to the reaction that we've written, the number of electrons that are being gained is single electron. The number of electrons being lost are 2. So we need to make sure they are balanced. The easiest way we can do is multiply the other reaction by 2, everything by 2, and then multiply the other one by the one. So I'm just getting these coefficients from the electrons. Okay. So we have two there. We have two. We have two. And then we have one. Everything else in the second half reaction will not change. So basically what you're going to have as a balanced chemical equation is something that is going to come out this way. So we have a two there. And then we have a two there. So you've balanced the redox reaction or the electrochemical reaction. Very, very important. If you're not very sure on how you get to go about that, make sure you check out the video that I worked on that involves a lot of practice questions on how you get to balance redox reactions. Okay. So now that we know what electrochemistry is all about, it's very, very important that we get to understand that we have what we call a galvanic cell, which we've said is very useful because it involves the conversions of chemical energy to what? To electrical energy, right? Okay. So now, it is going to base the concept on the aspect of the redox reaction, right? So we, we have an oxidation and reduction reaction in a redox reaction or in an electrochemical reaction. So the setup that we can have is where you have this case. Okay. Let's say you have a solution now. You get to add your reactants, one being oxidized and the other one being what? Being reduced. So since we've said... These reactants are going to involve the transfer of electrons from one to the other. So when you put them in a single solution, there's going to be a direct transmission or movement of electrons from one reactant to the other. And in such a case, no use of work is going to be performed. So the setup of a galvanic cell comes out differently 
in a way that you're going to have one side and then the other side where you would now put these two reactants in two different what in two different solutions and then you get to connect them so this is the way you're going to connect them using a wire so we have a wire connecting our two reactions right that's what we have and what basically is going to happen is these are called electrodes they are solids they are called electrodes and that's a wire so we now have a movement of electrons from a side where there is oxidation of course we've, we've emphasized to say oxidation basically involves loss right so when we have oxidation on the left part we expect that electrons are supposed to go to the other side which is what where reduction is occurring okay very important to note that and then what we need to expect is the oxidation part we call this the anode and then where reduction occurs we call it what the cathode so this is a, a basic setup of a galvanic cell it will it will move electrons will move from the anode to the cathode okay but then you realize that if electrons are moving from one side to the other side or what is on the oxidation part is going to be positive the other side is going to be negative and there'll be no movement of electrons why because all the electrons are going to be used up on the left part so what happens how do we get to solve that problem because if you want complete if you want continuous flow or sustainability of flow of current there would want to first of all have a balanced charges balance the charges on both the anode and the cathode and that's why we bring in the aspect of what we call a sword bridge okay so you have a sword bridge or you can have what we call a polar disk which may be something connecting like this direct the containers and it's a permeable membrane that separates it and then you can put what we call an electrolyte in both the salt bridge or the polar disk so you can only work with one at a time so that will be able to help you balance what balance the charges in the two solutions and allowing continuous flow of electrons from the left to the right and that's why this if you give given a question in a case where they get to put a bulb in between they, they'll put a bulb in between okay they'll put a bulb there and then they'll ask you explain they may put put a situation where they say the bulb was on for a short period of time and then it had gone off explain what had happened so electrons basically will be depleted on one side okay so elect will be or electrons will stop flowing from the anode to the cathode because there is no balance of charges in the solutions yeah so that's why we, if you bring in a salt bridge it will not go off and it will continues to be one okay so this is the setup of a galvanic cell that we're talking about so we've, we've seen the flow of electrons and that is our salt bridge so in a salt bridge as by as the name entails we usually put a salt there okay an electrolyte so that's what you have there so this is a simple setup of a, a galvanic cell so now in our next lesson we want to focus more on a galvanic cell and look at what we call the standard cell potential calculations involving the Gibbs free energy and many more things that are very helpful under the study of electrochemistry so thank you very much for taking time to watch the introductory lesson on electrochemistry and have a good day